All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome. I'm your host, Ryan Hines. I'm the Communications Manager at Biomin. I want to thank you for joining the next current issue of the series, Biomin Antibiotic Reduction Expert Webinars. Uh, our topic today is welfare and growing pigs, key points to take into account. Now, to tackle this topic, I'm joined by our featured speaker, Dr. Anthony Dalmau of the Animal Welfare Program at IRTA, which is the Institute of Agri-Food Research and Technology in Catalonia, Spain. Dr. Dalmau, thanks for joining us. Okay. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. De well, depending on where you are, it's it's morning or afternoon, absolutely. Um, Dr. Dalmau, can you tell us just a bit about yourself, how long you've been at IRTA uh, and your work? Yes, uh, I have. I, I began working in IRTA 15 years ago. I'm working here in the Animal Welfare Program. And well, I am vet. Uh, I studied a PhD uh, on animal behavior in 2000, uh, from 2000 to 2005. And um, from 2005 until now, I have been working in this field, animal behavior and animal welfare in, in IRTA. My species of work is pigs, but as well cattle, uh, rabbits, and a small and big ruminants. Excellent. All right. And we're looking forward to hearing uh, from some of your insights based on uh, those years of experience in this uh, field. So I just want to make one point for our live listeners uh, who have joined us today, that this is an interactive session. Uh, so that means that at any point, if you have a question for Dr. Dalmau, uh, you can use the chat function that you have on screen uh, to type in your question. And we'll collect as many of those we, as we can uh, as the session rolls on. Uh, and we'll address those in the question and answer portion of our program after the main remarks. Uh, so if you do have a question, just type it in and we'll get to as many of those as we can. But for now, uh, we're going to jump into the main points and hear about welfare and growing pigs. So Dr. Demel, uh, please take it away. Okay, thank you. So first, uh, first of all, I, I would like to talk a little bit about one important point. We're talking about animal welfare. That is, uh, is a stress. What is a stress? What is distress? And what and why is so important when we are talking about animal welfare? At the end, you you need to take into account that uh, a stress at the end is a word that is comes from the physics, and it means the pressure that you are doing against an object. So the biologists were taking exactly the same concept for talking about all the things that can occur on the animal that are going against this internal equilibrium that has this animal that is the homeostasis. So we need to understand that the pig, the cattle, ourselves, we are in a, in a world that for, for itself is not providing us the possibility to surviving without fighting for the survive. So something that is key for this capacity of surviving in an environment that is difficult for us that this case is coping us to a lot of uh, different factors okay one key point to survive in this uh, difficult environment is the stress response without the stress response we are uh, dead animals without a stress response the animal is not able to be adapted to the changes that we will have in our environment or we will have in our surroundings so the first point that we need to take into account is that stress is something inherent to any species, any animal. So it's something that is there and it's something that must be there because an animal without a stress response is an dead animal. Which is the problem then? The problem is that the stress response, okay, it will be so hard or so high as uh, difficult will be the environment where we are. So the animal will try to put so much energy, so much uh, uh, effort in going ahead in front of a difficulty as the difficulty will be in, in terms of magnitude. And this is a big issue. Imagine, for instance, now, imagine that we are now, uh, I don't know, one hour after taking lunch, okay, and, I, and we...
we are now in a room, we are not now in front of a computer. And I explained you something like that uh, about the stress. Uh, you are seated, you are uh, calm, you, uh, you have finished your food uh, one, year, uh, one, one hour ago, and you are beginning your digestion. Okay. When you are beginning your digestion, it's happening something very interesting is that all your blood is going to the digestive system, most of your blood is going there. And this means that your blood is coming from any other parts of the body because you don't have, uh, you are not connected to a big uh, uh, vessel or, the, or big bottle of blood. No, you have the blood that you have inside your body and this blood is going to one place or to another place inside your body depending of where it is necessary in each moment. And after taking lunch, this place where it's necessary is the digestive system, so the blood is going there. So imagine that now we are going to run, okay, outside. We were seated. We are just uh, hearing uh, these people or this person talking about uh, animal welfare. And now we are going to run uh, outside. And we will begin to run. What will happen is that your arms, your legs will ask for blood, okay? Because you need blood to feed. These, uh, these arms and these legs because you are running. The problem is that the blood is not there. The blood is in the digestive system. So your body will try to look for this blood, okay? Uh, and this blood is not there. And the problem is that after some minutes, that uh, after you are running during some minutes, you will have a very uh, interesting uh, problem is that you will have some pain in, uh, in a part of your body that is uh, just in the part where is the spleen, okay, where is this uh, this organ, because this spleen is trying to give you the blood that you don't have, okay, and you will see that if you are running just after taking lunch, okay, you will see that after a few minutes you will have a big uh, pain in your body and you will be stopped. And, and you, you will have to reduce your breathing activity, your heart activity, your, your activity in the muscles of the, of the, of the legs, on, on the activity of the, of the arms. And this is because your body is telling you, take care, you don't have so much blood, okay, you cannot put a lot of blood in your digestive system and at the same time putting blood in your arms, in your legs, and etc. And you will be stopped. Now imagine that in the same situation you are uh, there and you are at home, okay, sorry, in the room where the, the teacher is explaining you the stress response or the animal welfare issue, I don't know, okay, and then it's coming in somebody inside the room and say you, okay, everybody out, there is a fire, okay, this is the situation is changing. Okay, now somebody have uh, made you an advertisement telling you that there is a fire there. So you need to put a lot of effort in your legs, in your arms, to go out of this room so fast as possible. So your body will prioritize five or four areas to, uh, to give food or to give this blood. That will be the brain that will be who, who will decide if I need to go out, I need to break a window, I need to, I don't know. Okay, you will put a lot of blood in your muscles, especially the muscles in the uh, in the arms and the muscles in the legs. You will increase your uh, heart activity. Your heart will bite uh, faster because you need to move this blood very, very fast. And you will increase the increase in your body. And this is a stress response. And you will begin to run, okay? And you will run one kilometer, two kilometers, three kilometers, and you will say to me, no, 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 take care, take care. Uh, you said me that the, I, I, I would have uh, some pain if I, 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 I was dining or I was taking lunch just one hour be before, I will have some pain. I will say, you know, you will not have pain in this situation because your body is uh, is assessing the situation as critic and is telling you, no, no, you need to run because there is a fire. And as you need to run, you will run. It means that you will work well. No, you will not uh, work well. You will have problems, okay? But your body is deciding that it's better to continue running than just to be stopped. After running some minutes, you will see that you will have problems with the capacity of your body to uh, to, to put oxygen to the muscles 
and the muscles will need this oxygen to work. And if you will not be able to give so much oxygen as the oxygen that the muscles need, these muscles will begin to uh, work with anaerobiosis and they will produce acid lactic. And this acid lactic will produce a big damage in the muscles. And in one of the muscles in which you will have this big damage will be in your hair. So your hair will be damaged because there is a lot of acid lactic because you are running in a situation that you should not run, okay? But your body is asking you to run because there is a fire. So you will produce this acid lactic and this acid lactic will damage your hair. And your hair, some minutes later, will be stopped just because it's damaged uh, due to this acid lactic. And there is the possibility that this damaging is so big that you will die just because you were running more than your capacity to run at this time of the day. And what will happen? What will happen is that something that was there for your survival, that was the stress response, that it was there just because you needed to uh, survive to this fire, okay? Something that it was there to uh, avoid you to be uh, dead due to the fire will kill you just because you were not able to provide so much energy to the system. And this is the problem of the stress response. The problem of the stress response is when, you, when there is a very important situation, a very uh, challenging situation, the body is not negotiating with this situation. The body will put all their effort to cope with this challenge. And this is the same for humans, that for pigs and for cattle and for any other animal. Okay, we are not we are not negotiating with the stress response. Why? Because it has not any sense in terms of species. Imagine that I have a species in which the organisms can decide when they put all the efforts in a situation or not. This species will disappear. What we need is this, is that if there is this fire. Okay, all the animals of the species will put all their efforts to cope with this challenge. And if they are dying, the 90% of the animals is not a big issue for the species because there is a 10% of the species that have survived. And this is the part of the species that will make the species, okay, survive for years and years and centuries. Okay, so this is the problem that we have the with the stress response. Okay, that if the factor is very high, the response is as well very high. And the, the factor can be very high because uh, it's very acute in one moment, or can be very high because it's chronic in the time, okay, and it's affecting the animal in the long term. Let's see to, uh, to the, see some consequences that we have uh, when we are talking about uh, the stress response. For instance, okay, we have uh, two big uh, actors in the stress response. The first big actor is the adrenaline, okay? The adrenaline is the, the one that is uh, increasing the heart rate, is increasing the rhythmic breathing, is increasing the muscular tone, is increasing the brain activity, the awareness of the animal. Okay, this is something that is happening very fast when there is a, when there is a change in the, in the environment. So the heart is, acti is activated, the rhythmic breathing is, is increasing, muscular tone and brain activity. Now, imagine, for instance, somebody that is uh, driving a car and is always uh, very close to the car that they have in front, just trying to see if they can advance or, cannot, uh, not, cannot, or they cannot advance okay this car that they have in front and now uh, try to check how is working the heart of this person that is half a meter from the car that they have in front okay a person that is uh, going three four meters from the car in front probably they will have 80 90 bytes per minute in his hair the person that is going half a meter from the car in front he has to be more aware of the red lines of the car in front of he can uh, uh, go ahead or not, etc. So you will see that the heart is not biting to 80 
uh, bites per minute, he's biting to 120 to 130, around 40 bites per minute more. Why? Because the brain, okay, is more activated and all the body is more activated. So it's about 40 bites per minute more, okay? In one minute, we are talking about 40 bites. In one hour, we are talking about 1,200 bites. In two hours, 2,400 bites. I am driving one, uh, two hours a day, more or less, okay? So for a, for a day, I, I would have something like that, 2,400 uh, bytes more. Imagine in 100 days, okay, it's 200, 4,000, 40,000. In 200 days, more or less, half a million. In 300 days, okay, uh, more or less, well, let, let's see, let's see 200 days in half a million. If this is, for instance, one year, in 10 years, okay, we are talking about 5 million. In 20 years, we're talking about 10 million. So we're talking about 10 million more of, of, uh, of, of bites in the head, more if you are uh, just driving half meter from the car you have in front, that, you are, that if you are driving uh, several meters from the car you have in front. So which is the consequence for that for humans? The consequence is more hair damage, more hypertension, more gastric ulcers. Okay, and this is the cause that it has to have a stress response very high during a long time in uh, in some in, 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 in humans, for instance. In pigs, this is not so important because you will kill the animals before to have these uh, effects on the heart or in the on or in the stomach. Okay, because you will kill the animals younger. But let's see which is the consequences, for instance, in animals, because when you are in the hair, you are increasing the rhythmic breathing, you are increasing the muscular tone, or you are increasing the brain awareness, the brain activity, what you are increasing in an animal is the energy that the animal needs to survive, okay? To have a, a, a hair that is biting uh, to 80 bites per minute, moving to 120 bites per minute, this is very expensive. To breathe uh, 30 uh, or to make 30 breathing movements per minute or, or do uh, 120, this is very expensive in energy. So you need to provide the energy that the uh, that this need. Okay, and how you are providing this energy? This energy is provided in the body by another by another molecule that is the cortisol. And the cortisol, what it's providing or what it's doing, okay, is basically three different things. The first thing is going to the energy, uh, the reserve of energy in the organism and using, so you will use the reserve of fat, okay, with lipolysis, with lipolysis and you will use this for energy. And, will you, you, and you will use as well the reserve of uh, leucemia, of glucose, of sugars in the organisms, and you will use it. And which will be the consequence for that? The consequence will be that the stress will reduce the body condition of the animals, of humans and pigs and cattle and any other animal. But even worse, what more is doing the cortisol to provide the energy that needs the body when it is in a stress response. They will go to other uh, functions in the body. And which is the first function that you will affect? The reproductive function. Why? Because it's the only function in the body that is not there for the survival of the animal. It's there for the survival okay, of the species. And biologically, it has not sense to uh, have or to uh, waste a lot of energy in the reproduction of an animal, okay, if in the environment where is this animal is very difficult to survive, you will wait a little bit, the cattle will, will wait, the pig will, will wait. So the stress response is a very good, uh, uh, or it, it's a very good mod modulate, uh, it's modulating uh, very, very frequently, the reproductive system, 
if you want a good reproductive uh, function in an animal, you need to reduce the stress response because the first place where the stress response will go to take the energy will be in the reproduction of the animal. And this happens in all the species, even in humans, where most of the reproductive problems of this species is or are related with a stress response. But even worse, another place where the cortisol is going to take the energy is in the immune system, in the immunitary system. Why? Because the immunitary system is extremely expensive. It's very expensive for the body, the immunitary system. So the body has a problem. It has something that is very expensive, that is the stress response. And another thing that is very expensive, that is the immunitary system. And he needs to move this energy in some way. So the decision is, OK, as the immunitary system can work uh, more in the long term and the stress response is working better in the short term, I will use some energy of the immunitary system, OK, to uh, try to cope with the challenges in the short term. So there is a very, very uh, fast movement of energy from the immunitary system to the stress response. And this is very important for the survival of an of, 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 of a, of a individual because it works very well, but it has one problem. And the problem is when you have a chronic stress. The problem is when the stress is not something punctual in the time, it's not just one moment, but it's something that is there in the long term, because in the long term, you are taking energy from the immunitary system. And this means that in the long term, you will produce an immunodepression that will provide more diseases and more problems. And it's where animal welfare is a very important uh, element, is a very important tool, okay, if we want to reduce the antibiotics in our uh, production systems. The only way to reduce antibiotics in our production systems is to reduce, okay, the uh, factors that are forcing this immunitary system to reduce all these forces that are against the immunitary system. And the stress response is one of the main factors. So if we want to reduce the antibiotics in our production systems, we need to work with the stress factors that are affecting our animal as less stress factors. OK, more energy will be available for the animal to invest in the immunitary system and better and easier will be for us to reduce the antibiotics. At the end, the antibiotics is a way to help the animal from outside because the animal from inside is not able to fight with these challenges. So a way to reduce that is to uh, is to reduce the challenges and one of the key ways is to reduce these stress factors let's see one example that is very simple about what we are talking one stress factor for pigs is fear fearfulness okay and this is something very simple okay the animal is the animal is fear of the farmer for instance okay we will have a problem why because fearful it means that every time that the pig is hitting that the farmer is around, he will be in a stress response. And it means brain activity, heart activity, breathing activity, and muscular tone. And this is energy that is going to these places. And this energy is coming from other places. See the difference between an animal that is calm, that is this animal that will move here. See this animal, this animal is waiting for uh, apples. He knows that in this feeder will be apples. And when I will open the feeder, it will appear the apples, but it will appear as well a ball. That is something new for this pig. When a pig has something new in front, if the animal is not fearfulness, what we'll do is explore the new uh, element. If the animal is fearfulness, the animal will be afraid of this new element. Let's see one animal that is not uh, fearful. See how it's exploring, okay? He was here, he was waiting, 
for the apples and now is exploring the new um, the, the, the new uh, uh, the new uh, element that he has in the environment and after playing with the ball he will return to the apples because he wants to eat apples this is a calm animal okay and now let's see another animal that you see that these two animals were in the same pen one was uh, worked to avoid fearfulness the other not the other not this is not worked and you will see that this other okay what is doing is okay I'm, I'm i'm watching the ball but not directly okay i have my doubts i'm walking again i will go to see the ball it's not clear to me i will try to escape okay here not let's see i cannot escape again i will try to move to the ball uh, let's see no 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 i couldn't escape from here let's see if i can escape okay what you see here is not very difficult it's just some activity okay the animal in the in the left is not active the animal in the right is very active this activity this muscular activity this brain activity this heart activity this breathing activity is just fear and it has not a lot of importance but at the end is energy that you are losing in this animal an animal that is calm is an animal that will use the energy for the uh, growing, for the productive status, etc., etc. An animal that is fearful, that is nervous, etc., is an animal that is desviating this energy, okay, to this stress response that can be very simple and very low as this one, or can be something more, uh, more difficult. Imagine again, okay, the same example of the car, but in pigs, okay, that there is a pig that is fearful of the farmer okay because he had bad experiences in the past in the past with the farmers okay take into account that human animal relationship is one of the best ways to begin to win money in a farm if you have a very good relationship with your animals the animals will become and these animals will produce better than if you have bad relationship with your animals okay and this is especially important for instance for animals in which you are uh, uh, you are using their reproduction, their reproduction, because it's the first point that will fail when an animal has a high stress response. So imagine something so, so simple as this pig that is fearful of the farmer, okay? And we are moving from 70 uh, bytes per minute to 120 bytes per minute, okay? It's, 50, it's, it's just 50 bytes per minute more in one hour. Okay, but imagine that the farmer is around two hours and a half in a day. So in one day, this pig that is fearful in relation to one pig that not, is producing 7,500 bites more. In 150 days of the growing period, it means more than 1 million of bites more. The question is who is paying for these 1 million of bites more? And the answer is you are paying for that. You are paying for that because the animal is not connected anywhere. So the energy that is needed or the herd needs to move from 70 to 120, that is a lot, okay? This energy is paid with your food, okay? So the animal that is fearful of the farmer will happen two things or will not grow at the same level that the other animal that is not with fearful, or if they are growing at the same level, will be with more uh, concentrate, so with worse levels in terms of efficiency. It's for that that animal welfare is not just to see how the animal is. Animal welfare is a very important tool for increasing the efficiency in our farms. It's impossible to have the animal move or to produce in its genetical potential if the animal is desviating energy because have bad relationship with the colleagues or because it's difficult for him to look for food or because they cannot rest when they need to rest or because they are in head stress or because, or because they are fearful of the farmer. Every stress factor is deviating energy from the genetic potential of an animal, okay? And any energy factor is affecting the immunitary system of this animal. So as more stress factors are affecting to one animal, uh, far away as this animal from the potential or the genetic potential they have.
So let's talk just about some examples that we need to take into account when we are talking about uh, stress factors, okay? First point, remember that pigs are a social species, okay? They are born in a forest and they need, okay, they need it in this forest to be in group. Why? Because in group, they were safer in front of predators. This is the only objective to be in a group, okay? Pigs are in groups because they fail more safe or safer in front of predators. It's the only advantage that have to be in a group. All the rest are disadvantages. When you are in a group, you need to uh, negotiate for feed, for food, negotiate for drinking, negotiate for where we will rest, negotiate for everything. The only advantage that has to be in a group is to be safer in front of predators. So one big stress factor for pigs is to be isolated from the group. Remember that you are uh, for them, okay, a potential predator. So if you are managing an animal and this animal feels uh, far away from the group, you will see that it's vocalizing a lot and you will see that it's extremely nervous. Why? Because this animal, the only thing why he was in a group is because to be in a group just in these moments when they feel problems. And just in the moment when they feel problems, it's isolated. This is a big problem. Okay, so try to avoid isolation in pigs. And it means try to avoid move animals alone out of the pens and try to avoid that the animals that are, for instance, in the emergency pens, okay, on the house or, or the hospital pens in the in the in the farm, try to avoid that these animals feel they're isolated. That means that these pens are the only on the unit in which is mandatory, okay, that they can have some visual contact with other pigs because if they are alone there, they need at least to have some visual contact with other pigs because if not, you have animals in an hospital pen that we will put another challenge in top of the problem, okay, that these animals have and this animal make that this animal was in this hospital pen. So take care with that. Avoid isolation in pigs. In the other way, if you need uh, to uh, to have some competition for food, for drink, for place, for resting, for everything, you need to look for a way to solve this competition. So one way to solve this competition is to, okay, to form hierarchies. The pig is an animal that they decided in his history, okay, not to fight every time that the animal have a conflict of food, of drink, of resting, of uh, females, of any and anything. They decided not to fight every time. They decided to form something that is the hierarchy. And this means that I will fight once when I am doing the group the first time. And in this fight, I will decide which is my, my, my place inside the group. If I am the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the five, the sixth. Okay, and this is will be uh, the, the 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 classification that will provide me, okay, how uh, I will access any resources. So when I am going to rest, as I am the third in the pen, I know that I need to wait that the first and the two are taking the way or the place for resting, and I will rest just after that. And this is avoiding a lot of fighting in pigs, but they have one problem. The problem is that when I am mixing animals for first time, I will have a big fight there. Why? Because for them, it's very important to be the first this day. Because if I am the first, the first day that I am doing a group, I will be maintaining it in the first position during a long time. So one of the things that we need to avoid in a farm always is to avoid to mix the animals one and another and another and another time. Because every time that we are mixing animals, we are producing a lot of stress in these animals. Because every time the animals will try to fight so much as possible to be the first in this pen. Because they know that the rest of the group, okay, will, uh, will accept this situation during a long time. So I, it's very important for me the first day. 
So you will see that very fast when you are mixing animals that are unknown between them, very fast they are beginning to fight. Why? Because they need to see if they can be the first in these groups. Okay. Another important point when we're talking about competition for resources is to see if this competition is high or is low. For instance, in this video, okay, you see the first video, okay, these animals are restricted. You see that at the beginning there was a lot of time, but now it's a stop. Okay, why? Because these animals they will look for one position, each one to eat. The problem is that these animals are restricted. So after some minutes, okay, the animal that is eating one position will finish their own food and then will happen something like that. Okay, when the food is finished, then the animals try to take the food of other animals. This is competition for resources. Okay, one animal is trying to take the food of the other because these animals are restricted. Which is the consequence as, uh, of a system as this one? The consequence is after one month, you will see that you will have animals very big and animals very small. Why? Because animals very big are these ones that are winning these fightings and they are eating uh, their own food and the food of others. And the animals very small are animals that they cannot access to their own food because others are eating the food that they should eat. And this happens when there is a lot of competition. So one good indicator that something is growing in a farm is when you see in a pen, okay, very easily, which is the big one, which is the second one, which is the third one, which is the fourth one, which is the five one, etc. This is a good sign that something is not going well. When the things are difficult in a pen, okay, the way how are living these difficulties, the animals, is different for the first in the pen to the last in the pen. The last in the pen will suffer more than the first in the pen. And this is something that when we are uh, when we are in a farm, is something that not always we take into account. For instance, uh, it's very usual to see, okay, I will enter in a building 1,200 pigs, okay? And I am putting this, uh, this quantity of food. And at the end, I will have this quantity of, uh, of kilograms, okay? And my efficiency is in one. I am, doing, I am doing mean values. The problem is that you don't know exactly what is happening in each pen. And it happens that the worst animals in your pen are for sure less, more or less efficient than the, the best animals in your pen. And sometimes just taking one, taking two animals out of this pen, you could take less animals at the end of the growing period, but you could win more money because the 10 animals that you have inside instead of the 12, okay, this, these 10 animals could be more efficient than the 12 in which every, everything is more difficult for everybody. So important, when we are talking about uh, competition for resources, remember the pigs, okay, in our in our farms, okay, one of the points that is very important for them, okay, is the place where they are resting and the pay the place where we they are doing other activities. Okay, so one way to see how uh, or other ways, other indicators to see how is the competition in a in a farm is to see the lesions that the animal have in the body, for instance, if you have a lot of animals with lesions in this part of the body, it means that the densities are too high, okay? And is the dirtiness of the animals as well. If you have, for instance, that the animals, the bigger animals in your pen, okay, are very dirty, it means that probably you have a problem of temperature. But if the animals that are dirty are the smaller ones, it means that probably you have a problem of a space allowance in your pens. Why? Because the smaller ones used to be the more subordinate animals in the pens. And usually the pigs, if the temperature around is fine, they don't like to rest in the dunking area. The question is the animals are resting in the area, in the dunking areas because two reasons, or there is high temperatures, or and in this case used to be the dominant animals, that are more dirty, and in this case, the bigger animals, or you have a problem of space in your pen, and when the animals are trying to rest, the last animals, the, the subordinate animals, don't have place in the resting area, and they need to rest 
on the dangling area. So it's important as well to see which type of animals you have there or which type of animals you have with uh, lesions and in which area you have these lesions. Another important point to take in, to take in, in, in pigs, to consider pigs, is the, uh, the need that these animals have to explore, uh, explore the environment. Take into account that pigs live in a very difficult environment. Okay, why? Because the forest in some seasons of the year is an environment in which you don't have a lot of food. And for this reason, the pig is omnivorous. This means that they eat everything because they live in a very difficult environment. And the second point is an animal that is looking for food, looking for food, looking for food, looking for food every day, every time, all time. So it's an animal that is obsessed to looking for food in the uh, in the natural uh, in the natural environment, the wild boar is an animal that is obsessed to look for food, and our pig it's came from this it's coming from this wild boar in, and is obsessed for looking for. Food. So one of the problems that we have with this animal that is obsessed for looking for food is that this is in the brain of the animal. This is something that is a, a, a basic behavior for pigs. And with this behavior, it's so important that this was uh, marked on the brain of the animals, and even in domestic pigs that they are uh, fed a libitum with a lot of concentrates, even with animals that are satiated, okay, when they are awake, okay, the first thing that they have in mind is look for food, okay, explore, you need to explore, you need to explore. And this is a big issue, because this animal that need to explore in a pen, in a normal pen, Okay, will happen two different things. The first one is that uh, the contact, the social contact, that is something like that, that is something nor normal between pigs. Okay, this social contact that should be normal, okay, when you are in an environment in which you don't have a lot to do and you are, oh, your brain is asking you to explore, to explore, to see, to touch, to blah, 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 blah. Okay, when you are in these conditions, sometimes something that should be positive becomes negative just because you are not having or you don't have any other thing to do. Okay, so you are disturbing other animals, you are touching animals that you don't need to touch, okay, you are disturbing animals, and sometimes you are doing some redirected behavior as a Bible. Okay, for instance, see this, this study, okay, the difference between positive and negative in intensive and extensive uh, conditions. This is the same breed, Iberian pigs. See how in intensive conditions, the animals are touching more ones to each other. Why? Because they are they don't have any other thing to do. Okay, so as I don't have other thing, I, I need to stimulate myself and the environment is poor and it's not stimulating me. Okay, I am stimulating with other animals. So what happens that the positive contexts are increasing, and of course, some of these positive contexts, okay, will become negative social contexts because the animal that is touched, sometimes they don't want to be touched. Okay, so it's increasing a lot, the percentage of animals with positive social contact in comparison to animals that are inexpensive with a lot of space, and accordingly, it's increasing a lot, the percentage of negative social contact. Another consequence is the tail biting that is a redirected behavior. What is tail biting? Tail biting, this is a, the structure that we, we used it in the past to talk about tail biting. Okay, and we said, okay, this is a redirected behavior. The animal needs to explore the environment, but the environment is poor. So the animal would have around to explore. But one of the points that they have around to explore is the peak, it's a lot of peaks. And the pigs have these tails that, okay, this tail is interesting, okay, I will touch the tail. After some minutes touching the tail, what will happen is that this tail will be damaged. When the tail is damaged, then it appears blood and it appears a second phase of the tail biting. When the blood appears, the animal is omnivorous, pigs are omnivorous, so the animal will say, oh, this is tasty, this is nice. Then you have a second phase in which after this exploration state, the animals say, no, no, I want that. So they will try to bite this tail and bite the other tail and bite the other tail and bite the other tail. And this is how usually we explain it, uh, how appeared it tail biting when I begin with that in 2005. Now, the structure of tail biting is this one of here. 
okay, I will not go inside this uh, this skin. It's just to tell you that tail biting is something very difficult to explain, or they're very difficult uh, to solve with just one uh, cause. At the end, tail biting is a multifactorial problem that needs a multifactorial solution. The problem with tail biting is that the stress factors that are affecting the animal okay, are zooming one on top of each other. So as more uh, stress factors the animals will uh, suffer, is more easily will appear this redirected behavior that is, I am frustrated, as I'm stressed, and I need to calm myself, usually just biting that, or just touching that, or just doing that. This is still biting. So what will happen is that in some farms, okay, or in some cases, you will see that, uh, I don't know, it increases the temperature and appears still biting. And the other farm, it will appear a new personnel and will appear the tail biting. And in the other one, you will change the you will change the feet and will appear the tail biting. And then you will have the three person in front of you who will say, no, no, it's the it's a new person. No, 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 it's the feet. And, and the other one, no, 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 it's the temperature. And the answer is no, 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 it's everything. The question is that your animals. They had a lot of stress factors working on it. And in your case, the last factor was the new personnel. And in your case was the temperature. And in your case was the fit. But at the end, the problem is that as you see in this uh, graph of the of the right, okay, the problem is that you have this glass that you are putting water and water and water and water. And at the end, there is the last factor that makes the water go out. Okay. But the question is not the last factor. The question is all the sum of the stress factors that were affecting this animal from the beginning. So this is the problem of tail biting, that there is not a unique factor, but it's a combination of everything that makes the animal uh, in a situation of so challenges that at the end they decide to, to move, uh, to redirect behavior, to make something strange that they will not do in the natural conditions, but they will do under conditions in which the challenges are too much for them. And then the behavior is uh, is, 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 is uh, defending the animal in this way. Uh, alternative to reduce the biting, always the best alternative is to reduce the space, uh, to, re to increase the space allowance for sure. If you have less possibilities that the animals have in contact with other animals, is the best possibility or is the best strategy to reduce the biting. Then, if you cannot move a lot, the space allowance that is the new, normally the case, you need to provide the animals other elements that they can use, okay, to move, uh, to, to manipulate in instead of the tails of the colleagues, okay? So for that, it works a lot or, or it works very well when you are trying to give uh, some enrichment material. This will, this will solve the problem, no. This will reduce probably the possibility that you have the problem. But remember that you have a lot of factors that are zooming on the animal to make this uh, capacity of the animal to produce this redirected behavior. So uh, I will finish uh, in close because uh, yeah, uh, it's time for finish. So just uh, which kind of enrichment material we can use it. You have EFSA report that is talking you uh, very well which systems you can use, but but summarizing the best enrichment material that exists is the straw. Why? Because the straw is manipulable for the animal, because the animal can move the straw in different ways, and because the animal in the straw have a lot of information. Remember that you are visual animals. Pigs are uh, olfactory animals. So in the same way that if you are closed in a room and I put you a TV and you can, you can stay during hours uh, watching the TV and be entertained with the with the TV for a pig if a straw and especially when the straw is new, okay, he can be very entertained in sniffing and touching and moving this straw. The question is not to put in uh, toys to the animals. The question is to enrich the environment, to enrich the animal, to provide the animal the capacity, okay, to stimulate this brain that is always looking for, looking for, looking for. We need to stimulate the animal, okay? And the material, the better is stimulating the animal is a good bet 
of a straw. The problem is that you know that in most of the farms that we have around the world, it's very difficult to put this straw because we have the slat and this is not easy. So we can move to alternative systems as giving the straw in another way or working with ropes, etc. But never forget that the best one for the animal, the best one could be a very good bed of a straw because it's something that is really stimulating the animal. So, Dr. Dama, I, if, if I can keep with you on that point there, because that's uh, very interesting. Uh, we okay. have had a couple of questions related to those remarks um, on reducing tail biting and flank biting. Uh, it sounds like it's not just one thing, but from a practical perspective, if we can't keep pigs on straw, what are the things that we should look to do? What are the, what are the main points that uh, our listeners should take away to reduce that behavior? And to improve the welfare. Yeah. Well, for instance, uh, the tail biting is appearing in most of the in most of the farms in the transition of the animals just just after winning. Okay, it's when it, it when appears uh, this behavior, tail biting and ear biting. So uh, we need to take into account uh, what is happening with the animals at these times. Okay, and one of the things that is happening is that uh, we are separating this animal from the mother. We are uh, uh, mixing these animals with unknown animals, and we are changing the uh, the feeding. Okay, from this from this from these animals. So in a very short time, or very um, uh, in a very in very short time you are uh, adding three different uh, stress factors that are very important. So the first, one of the first point that we could do, okay, is first to separate these stress factors. So for instance, one, one that you cannot uh, avoid is to separate the, 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 the piglet from the mother, okay? But you, are, you can do it later and you can do it after uh, the animal can be used to the solid food better. So a transition, a better transition to the to the food, to the solid food, will be reduce the tail biting. Uh, if you can mix the animals when they are that this is now a practice, a practice that is becoming more and more usual. Okay, to mix the animals, the different litters in the farrowing area and not later. So the animal when he's when they are with the mother, they already are mixed with the animals that they will meet later in the in the transition period. Then you are avoiding a second factor of stress during the transition. And then when it's arriving the transition, okay, uh, you will have only one factor that will be the uh, the separation of the mother. When you are there, then you will, you need to provide this a lot of different enrichment material and to change it and, and to change this material with some frequency okay why because you need to this animal is very active okay you will reduce a lot the social context because uh, the animal are used once to each other because you you've make you made these mixtures uh, before in the time so you will provide uh, you will provide uh, some enrichment material you will change this, some this, this enrichment material and probably will need to uh, provide some extra space than the usual space that we are giving to these animals. Uh, this could be the best strategies that you could uh, you, you, that you could use to try to reduce this uh, this redirected behavior. There is not a magistral formula, okay? But uh, if you are trying to reduce the impact of the uh, winning period in the animals, just doing that a little bit later with some better transition to the solid food and trying to uh, make the mix of the animals previously and not at this moment, you will reduce more, uh, you will reduce a lot the stress factors in this, in this moment where you will have a lot or, or where the risk of having tail biting and having ear biting is probably the biggest in all the uh, in all the in all the cycle, in all the production cycle. Then later, yeah, sorry, I finished. Yeah, yeah. Then later in the growing period, try to maintain the animal 
uh, with a lot of enrichment material, changing the enrichment material. You, if you cannot use a bedding of, of, of a straw, you can use some packages of a straw in which the animal can take small pieces and he is uh, there dedicated to taking. Okay, and uh, try to work as well the space allowance because the space allowance is a, is a big issue. Yeah, that's interesting. It's a, a very clever approach. I would imagine that's something you could apply to other problems as well as to, in general, space out those milestones, are unavoidable, those, those stress points, those inflection points in the in the production process where the animals undergo a lot of stress. Those should not come all at once, but they should be, to the best extent possible, put space and distance between them. I, I didn't hear you very well because there is some cut. I apologize, that might be the internet uh, connection is interrupting our final points. But um, moving on, I was just, we did have a question. Are you able to hear me now, Dr. Dabao? Can you hear me? Sorry? Are you able to hear me? I, I can hear, but I understand very well you. Are, are you able to hear me? This, I don't know if this is an improvement. I mean, told to put off my audio my video okay for, for me it's fine i'm i'm i will not talk about thermoregulation so for me so, so one, of the, one of the questions that we've had just now is um are there any nutritional solutions anything you can add, change in terms of diet or feeding or feed additives uh, that would help with stress management magnesium was raised you know is magnesium an effective addition to reduce stress uh, and, and cortisol levels anything else that you would advise there is uh, now, now the magnesium I had, uh, we made a thesis some years ago and have a very, uh, a, a, a very minimum effect at the end in the, on the animal. It, we have tried it as well with tryptophan that uh, this has some effect, okay, because it's, uh, it's helping the animal to provide more serotonin, serotonin and this is something that will help. But nowadays, the things that uh, probably we are seeing that could work better are uh, some natural uh, some, nat some, some natural substances, okay, that uh, are acting on the microbiota of the of the intestine in terms of uh, sometimes probiotics, sometimes prebiotics. Okay, that they can change the modulation of the of some signals to the brain. In fact, nowadays we know, for instance, that changing in rats. Okay, but we know that changing the microbiota in in the in the intestine, we can change the aggressivity of rats. In in fact, there is a very interesting study study in which you have two strains of rats. One was very aggressive, the other was not aggressive. And they change it. The, the, they 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 move it the feces from one rat to the to the to, to the to the other rats, and the rats that were aggressive became not aggressive, and the rats that were not aggressive became aggressive. So uh, nowadays, and in humans, we have as well some signals that uh, there is some depressions that are coming from signals that that, that are sending. Uh, some uh, microorganisms in the uh, in the intestine. So uh, nowadays, one of the routes to calm the animals to uh, change the the, 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 the the this activity of the animals or this aggressivity on the animals is to uh, modify with some products the, the the microbiota in the intestine, and probably we will go in this way more than giving uh, elements like uh, magnesium, tryptophan, or, or, or others like that. So Excellent. this is a very interesting point that we will that, 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 that we will see in the future. Yeah. yeah that, that's certainly a field to watch. Uh, Dr. Demel, I want to thank you for your time. We've come to the end of our hour, but uh, the information you shared with us has certainly been valuable. Uh, we want to thank you uh, for sharing a, a, just a glimpse of your work on an important topic, and we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Okay, wanna, thanks a lot. I wanna also thank our audience for joining and for your participation for those questions. Um, unfortunately, we, we're short on our Q&A allocation today, but we will uh, try to get back to you 
for those of you who did ask questions. Also, if you're interested in some of the topics that have been raised today, um, including uh, microbiota modulation or tail biting in pigs, uh, check out the Biomin YouTube channel and you can find all of the past recordings that we've covered um, some of those in other sessions of our antibiotic reduction expert series. Uh, but for now, we will be signing off. I encourage all of you to give us your feedback. Um, as soon as the session closes, we'll ask you to answer just a couple of questions to let us know how we're doing, what future topics you'll get to. We're going to take a, a small hiatus um, over the next coming weeks, but we hope to come back to you with a, a new slate of experts uh, starting in this fall. So please look for that from Biomen. Uh, on behalf of Biomen, I wish you all stay safe. Thank you for tuning in. We'll speak to you again next time. Bye. Bye.